And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. As always, I'm your host Kenneth Grunfelder and it's great to have you guys here on this Thursday, July 11th. We have a lot to talk about on the show today. Before I get into that, just want to remind you guys, as always, to tip or donate, get your comments recognized, make sure to go to the following link, that is gsmcpodcast.net. Again, that really helps the show, makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. And as always, it is displayed on the ticker at the bottom of the show segment down below. So I hope you guys enjoyed my, uh, if if you saw my my cold open, which was I accidentally hit, uh, you know, the one person graphic. So you saw me before I played the, the intro that I usually play before I start. So that was my that was my first official uh, cold open. It was a uh, it was like a 2 second uh snap of me and uh then I, I clicked on the uh, the intro. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. So let's get into the rundown for the show today. So I did watch episode 2. Now I did watch it 2 days ago, but you know, it was late. I was coming home from work, so I you know, didn't want to put it in the show yesterday. So we're going to talk about episode 2 of Hard Knocks with the Giants. I'll give you my overall thoughts on the episode. I did also watch the first episode of Receiver. Now, they released all eight episodes, so I'll have to watch all of them at some point, but I did sit down and watch the first one last night, so maybe I'll you know, talk about that a little bit towards the end of this segment here. But yeah, so we'll get into the Hard Knocks episode. I'll recap it, give you my thoughts. Then... We have reached our final schedule breakdown. Today, it'll be the Denver Broncos schedule, so I'll get into that. In the third part of the show, we'll talk about Patrick Mahomes winning the SB for the best NFL player, so I'll give you my thoughts on that. In the fourth part of the show, I'll talk about what an NFL scout had to say about Deshaun Watson and his upcoming 2024 campaign, and then in the final part of the show, we'll talk about some comments made by Devontae Adams about Antonio Pierce and also I kind of wanted to touch upon something else uh, regarding Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams so that's the rundown for the show today hope everybody's doing well so let's get into the first topic which is talking about episode two of the Giants hard knocks so interesting episode and I think a lot of people are really excited for the next one and I'll get into that because it's you know involves Saquon Barkley, but yeah, it was an interesting episode. You kind of saw the Giants were at the combine, so we saw all that. Uh, we also saw before we get into the combine stuff. One of the interesting things was how these guys in the front office handle the media, and you kind of get you get to see a behind the scenes when it comes to that because Joe Shane kind of got the rundown of what questions he would be asked before he took the podium and you know he he talked about what he would say and you know the questions had to do with Saquon Barkley of course because that really has been the main topic you know before he signed with the Eagles of course that was something that you know was talked about a lot is what are the Giants going to do with Saquon Barkley and I I thought that was interesting because then it just kind of makes you wonder you know a lot of the a lot of the lines that you know some of these guys say are rehearsed, you know, um, and it was funny because he said something about uh, you know what he but well, he wasn't going to say it. It was about how you know they offered Saquon a ton of money, but he didn't take it. He 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 said that before he took the podium, but he's like, yeah, I'm not going to say that. So that was a uh, that was kind of funny, but yeah. So they went to the combine. You, you kind of saw them, you know, watching. You know, these guys run the 40-yard dash. I think I touched upon, you know, them watching the Xavier Worthy uh, 40-yard dash. And they and Joe Shane was like, he better, he's got to run it again to try to break the record. And he did. Uh, he broke John Ross's record. He got a 4-2-1 on the 40-yard dash. And I did, yeah, because I did touch upon it. Because they said, all right, well, he's going to be taken at the end of the first round. And sure enough, he got taken by the Kansas City Chiefs. And they made that trade with the Buffalo Bills to get Xavier Worthy. And also, they met with a lot of the quarterbacks as well. They they met well with the top quarterbacks. They met with Caleb Williams. They met with Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, 
uh, Drake May. They met with all those guys. And I'll be honest, like when Brian Dable's like talking to them about, you know, uh, play certain plays and things like that, I, 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 I kind of got lost. Um, but, you know, and you also saw them uh, interview Malik Neighbors as well. And, you know, Dable asked some questions uh, about, you know, how do you handle losing, you know, things like that. And the other thing, too, is um, Joe Shane, you know, spoke with the Patriots while they were at the Combine. Uh, because the Patriots, you know, there was that speculation that they possibly were going to, you know, or not possibly, but they were, there were speculation that maybe, you know, they'd be taking offers and possibly trade out of the number three pick. And Joe Shane's like, keep me in the back of your mind because, you know, the Giants were interested in maybe trading up and trying to take, you know, one of the top quarterbacks. But we all know that ended up not happening. And the Giants are going to be rolling out Daniel Jones. But they did also bring up, you know, they need to, they need a backup plan for Daniel Jones. You know, that was there was a little snippet of that in there where Joe Shane was like, we need a backup quarterback, whether it's a young guy or we got to, you know, go out and trade for somebody, sign someone, whatever the case may be. And we now know that that eventually became Drew Locke. So that's their backup plan. Now, if the Giants were able to trade up, they probably would have taken a quarterback, but they ended up staying at six. They took Malik Neighbors, and, you know, we know the rest of the story there. But then towards the end of the episode, you had Joe Shane talking to Saquon Barkley's agent and Saquon himself. Now, when Joe Shane talked to Saquon, you know, Saquon just did not seem interested in talking to Joe Shane. And Joe Shane basically told him, we're not going to franchise tag you, go test the market, see what kind of offer you get, and then come back to us, and we'll see if we match that. Now, we know that Saquon came out and said the Giants never offered him anything. So we're going to find out in next week's episode, you know, how everything kind of unfolded. And I'm I'm interested to see, you know, how that is, you know, um... But, again, I'm not a Giant fan that's, you know, upset with Saquon taking more money to go elsewhere if the, Gi if the Giants did offer him a contract. I mean, they offered him one, you know, last year, and he didn't take it, you know. So, it is what it is. And, you know, like they were talking about in Episode 1, the Giants have a lot of holes. You know, on the offensive line, there's holes on defense. They got to get more play more pass catchers. You know, I, I think when you look at the needs for the Giants, running back is not a top priority. And, you know, they went out and they got Devin Singletary, and I think he's a nice player. He's not Saquon Barkley, but the Giants have other needs. The offensive line, pass catchers, it's just – and quarterback. But we're going to – they're going to have to roll out Daniel Jones at least for 2023 – or 2024. So, I, I again, I, I'm okay with – them letting Saquon walk, walk, but they wanted Saquon to come back. It's just they wanted him to come back at their price, and that ended up not happening. So, but we're gonna find out exactly how all that unfolded. But yeah, when when Joe Shane was talking to Saquon, yeah, he just did not seem interested in wanting to talk with him. He had no, he had no. It seemed like he had no interest. So, but we'll find out in next week's episode. You know how that all unfolded. I'm looking forward to that. It, it's been good so far. Uh, you know, we'll find out. You know how the Brian Burns trade kind of went down. Because actually, that was the other thing too, uh, with the salary cap going up. Uh, Joe Shane was very excited about that because you know that gave, that gave the Giants more flexibility, and that I, I guess that was part of the reason why you know they went out and they signed and they traded for Brian Burns and then signed him to a big contract. So, um, you know, that was another thing that, uh, that, that, that was, I like that. I think that was at the very beginning of the episode. So, but yeah, that, that's really my, my overall thoughts on it. Again, the, the Saquon stuff is, is like the juiciest part of the, of these episodes because you want to see, you know, how everything kind of unfolded behind the scenes. Um, but again, I, I I'm, I'm fine with Saquon leaving. 
I mean, going to the Eagles, yeah, I mean, there's a little, there's a part of me where it stings. But, you know, they're a better team. They're more equipped for making a deep playoff run, getting to a Super Bowl, and even winning a Super Bowl. You know, the Giants aren't that team right now. You know, I, I mean, I listen, Saquon staying would have been great. And he was probably the best offensive player. Well, no, he, not, not probably. He was the best offensive player. But, you know, he's getting older, de dealt with a lot, has dealt with injuries over the course of his career. And like I've been saying, the Giants had other needs that they needed to address. And overpaying for a running back that's, you know, getting closer to 30, getting past his prime year soon. Yeah, that was. I, I think that was the right move. I, I think that was the right choice. Now, if you want to go back to when... They had to decide between paying Daniel Jones and paying Saquon Barkley. You know, maybe you, maybe you pay Saquon Barkley and you let Daniel Jones walk. I don't know. But, l listen, all of this, you know, Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones, these were guys drafted by Dave Gettleman. Gettleman. You know, Joe Shane and Brian Dable inherited, inherited this stuff, these players. So, you know, it's not entirely on them. So, when they let Saquon Barkley walk, well, they didn't draft Saquon Barkley. I don't know. So, we'll find out what happens in Episode 3, how things unfold. I, I guess we'll see. I think we're going to see the Brian Burns trade because we're, we're, we're getting up to uh, free agency. So, we'll see how it all goes. But let me know what you guys think about the episode. What were your overall thoughts on it? They release every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So, yeah, we're on episode two now. But they And then you got on Netflix. So those episodes are on... The Hard Knocks episodes are on Max. The Receiver episodes, they're on uh, Netflix. And Netflix, they just released all of them at the same time. And I only watched episode one last night. Got to see George Kittle's 30th birthday. He scored three touchdowns on his birthday. So uh, that was uh, that was funny. Uh, well, seeing because his wife hung like he had like she like threw a surprise party for him after the game against the Cowboys, and she hung like all of his shoes like on the ceiling. So um, yeah, so that was funny. Um, episode two is going to be more focused on Justin Jefferson and Devontae Adams because they focused on Amon Ross, St. Brown, uh, Debo, and George Kittle, and then um, you got Devontae and Justin Jefferson. I guess they'll be more. They'll focus more on them in episode two. So, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about a lot of NFL content coming out. So I, I'm going to continue to watch the receiver stuff on Netflix and, and maybe do, you know, some, uh, some topics on that. So, um, yeah, we, so we're going to take our first break of the show. And then when we come back, we will break down the Denver Broncos schedule for 2024. I'll give you my early win loss predictions for them. So. With that being said, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. <laughs> 